بوس Hello everybody and welcome to a new episode of The Moose. Moose. <laughs> Today we are here in uh, Domus Medica and joining me is now Mary Mastrangelopoulou. Say Maria, Maria is Maria. Maria. <laughs> <laughs> and she uh, finished her master thesis right now. And today we have some questions about uh, her, th uh, her thesis and uh, what molecular biology and her special field stem cells is all about. Yes, um, in my project um, it was about stem cells, epigenetics and neuroscience. Um, we, we, want, we were interested to see if adipose tissue stem cells, as the stem cells I'm using are called, because they're from adipose tissue, yeah, commonly yeah. called fat, um, they have the potential to differentiate into other cell types such as neurons, yeah. because that could be very important for treatment of neurodegenerative diseases. Yeah. During embryonic development, um, cells or genes are activated or permanently repressed according to which pathway the cells are going to take. Yeah, okay, yeah. So the more the cells are differentiating, the more restricted they become in their differentiation potential. Yeah. So, for example, embryonic stem cells can give rise to any cell type in the body. Okay. But this is not the case for stem cells that I'm working on because they are somatic stem cells or adult stem cells, as they are called. So I wanted to see the epigenetic level, if we can manipulate it or actually what kind of changes we can induce to them when we try to differentiate them from stem cells yeah. into yeah. neurons, which is another germ layer. Because this makes it even more complicated yeah, yeah. because adipose tissue stem cells belong to the mesodermal germ layer while neurons belong to the ectoderm we can we could keep it a little bit easier <laughs> <laughs> i know it's very complicated yeah it's complicated i know so anyways through the epigenetic level we can see that some genes can be de-repressed while well, we thought that they were repressed so that permanently. You, that you can uh, manipulate them again. We can manipulate it at the epigenetic level. Mm -hmm. So we can see that some genes or a specific gene. I was, I was focusing on a gene which is um, tightly um, connected to neurogenesis, which is called nested. And we can see that while, for example, we thought it was repressed, we saw that this gene could be de-repressed and get expressed in a high level. Yeah. So we can see that through some treatments we can manipulate actually the epigenetic level of some genes. Okay, and that, that's what you didn't know before and that's what you found out during your uh, Yes, yes. Yeah. The next stage, we would like to see at the in vivo level, that is the physiological level, we will try to inject mice which have problem in the spinal cord mm -hmm. and see if actually those cells yeah. can treat. Yeah, okay. So you didn't work with uh, pets right now? No, not, yet, no. not yet, I was just working on human stem cells, that's yeah. it, only in vitro. Can you uh, tell us maybe something about the practical use or the practical long-term use for people? What can, you, what can they do with this result? Is it that um, you, uh, can you a little bit, I don't know, maybe uh, defeat Alzheimer or something? But this is uh, okay, <laughs> first of all, uh, I will talk about the gene I'm working on. Uh, okay. Nestin uh, is implicated in very like very different um, diseases, starting from multiple sclerosis, um, Alzheimer, Parkinson, coronary heart disease, liver damage. Uh, it's such like it's so many connected. diseases. Yeah. So many diseases that this gene is correlated. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but now the differentiation into neurons, of course, it could have great implications for um, 
for neurodegenerative medicine because, for example, let's say it could treat people that are paralyzed, for, for instance, or, yeah, or uh, they have Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's disease. I mean, yeah. it has great clinical appliance. Yeah, just one more question. Uh, I found a quotation from Richard Feynman, a physicist, uh, who said some years ago, science is like sex. Sure, it gives you some practical results, but that's not why we do it in the first place. Uh, so, what drives you as a researcher? Is it uh, the passion for the journey or uh, and the process rather than the goal itself? I think molecular biology is amazing. Like every day that I'm coming to work, I feel like it's a new discovery yeah. to make. So I'm always excited to come to work. So. Um, yeah, well, I can agree with the quote. That's, uh, <laughs> that's nice to hear. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Mary, for this uh, insights in molecular biology. And yeah, see you for the next time for the movie.